So if you're a new player to DCS, you're probably most likely using a hat switch to look around. So you push the hat switch Altitude. left, Altitude. push it right, up, down, and this is how you look around the jet. This is how you dogfight. This is how you manage your camera. In a dogfight, this is pretty difficult because you have to fly and keep your view on your enemy, which, I mean, you could use the F5 outside view to do so, but it's hard to keep that view in a dogfight with just a hat switch. If you're finding this difficult, or you want a better solution. What you're gonna want is head tracking. And there are a lot of options out there, but today we're gonna go over four options for head tracking. Now, before we get started, I wanna make sure that everyone's aware, I will not be going over VR head tracking. I know that VR is a type of head tracking, but in my personal opinion, VR is in its own category, simply because not only is it tracking your head movement, but it's also projecting an image in 3D space directly into your eyes, whereas non-VR head trackers, do, they don't do that. It simply just tracks your head and eyes, and that's it. Additionally, VR headsets require significantly more computing power than a regular non-VR head tracking solution Another requires. One. So if you're going VR, not only are you spending 500 to thousand dollars on a headset, you're also gonna need a pretty beefy it's computer right, to run it. The non-VR head tracking solutions I'm gonna be discussing in this video don't take nearly the overhead that a VR headset will. So if you're looking for VR solutions, this is not the video. In this video, we'll just be going over non-VR head tracking solutions. First, you have Toby Eye Tracker. If you haven't watched my video review on Toby, I'll put the link in the description below. I recommend you watch it. It's a great solution if you don't wanna have a headset clip or some sort of wire coming off of your head for an LED array to track. Instead, Toby uses a sensor bar that has multiple cameras in it to determine the location of your head in XYZ space as well as rotation left, right, up, down. It can also determine the position of your eyes and track what your eyes are looking at. If you want, you can actually turn on ghost, is what they call it, where it shows a bubble on the screen of what you're looking at. And in my experience, it's actually fairly accurate. It's not exact at all times. Sometimes, depending on where you're looking on the screen, it might not be exactly on the thing you're looking at, but very, very, very close. And in my opinion, it is the best eye tracker on the market currently. It's a very well polished product, but it does have its pros and cons. First, its biggest selling point is no hardware on your head. The only thing it comes with hardware wise is the eye tracker sensor bar, which uses one USB port. The software is fairly intuitive, at least in my personal opinion. You can adjust the sensitivity to your liking. You can make it so that as you move your head slightly to the left, right, up, or down, the camera can move one to one, or you can increase the sensitivity so that when you move your head slightly to the left or right, the camera moves all the way around 180 degrees behind you. This is great for dog fighting. The only complaint that I've had with Toby Eye Tracker, in DCS specifically, is that if I zoom in on something inside the cockpit or something outside the cockpit, there's a little bit of jitter, meaning the camera does move around a little bit. Even though your head is as still as you can make it, the camera's moving. Now, when I got the Toby a while back, this was more visible, and having revisited it just recently, I've noticed they've improved this a lot. There's not nearly as much wiggle as there used to be. I feel like I have a lot more control now, and I can only imagine that it's gonna get better and more and more improved as time goes on. But other than that, that's really my only complaint with Toby is it's not as solid as Track IR. But for some people, the benefit of not having to have any LED array clipped to the side of your head and extra wires, just the single USB cable from the sensor bar, is a huge bonus and a very big selling point. The only other downside to the Toby, in my opinion, is the price tag. Typically, it goes for $339 US. However, currently, as of the making of this video, it's going for $288. So it's a little pricey, and it's currently the most expensive head tracking solution on my list in this video. Next is Track IR. Now, I believe Track IR is most likely the most common head tracking used by the DCS community only because it's been around for so long. So a lot of people bought it before all these other head tracking solutions started to become developed. When you buy a Track IR, you'll get an IR camera sensor. And depending on if you get the regular or pro bundle, you'll either get the IR reflector clip that goes onto a baseball cap bill or an LED array clip that clips onto a headset. The regular bundle is $150, the Pro bundle is $170. The IR reflectors simply reflect IR light coming off of the IR sensor back into the IR camera sensor. While the Pro bundle comes with the LED array, 
that is powered by a USB cable plugged into the same USB cable that comes off of the sensor. This LED array has to be clipped to something. You can clip it to your headset. And the sensor just tracks those IR LEDs. Track IR provides the same features as far as uh, head tracking, both rotational, up, down, left, and right, and XYZ space, leaning in, leaning left, leaning right. The only feature that Track IR does not provide is the ghost bubble. This is because Track IR does not track your eyes. It only tracks either the LED array or the hat clip reflector. The pros to this, though, is that because of the nature of LEDs and the IR sensor, Track IR is extremely solid. What I mean by that is if you're zoomed in, you don't get that jitter at all. It is as solid as you can get. The other pro to a Track IR is it's been around since 2005, so they've had plenty of time to improve and polish their tracking software. Now, I've actually never used the Track IR IR reflector clip for a baseball hat, but I'm fairly certain it has some of the same issues that the LED Array Pro bundle has. For example, in my room, I have a window, and if the sun beats down through that window bright enough, it can confuse the track IR sensor and I'll get some weird behavior when I'm looking around. So I have to make sure that my blinds are completely closed so that no IR light leaks into the room onto the ground where the sensor can see. And of course, one of the biggest complaints from a lot of players is the cable. Not all players, but a lot of us don't like having that extra cable that's coming off of our headset that we have to plug into uh, a USB port. I actually met with Track IR at the Flight Sim Expo in Las Vegas last year. And I asked them about a wireless headset clip, if they were developing one or if they were thinking about developing one. And I didn't really get a clear answer. So my assumption is they're not. So for now, there are some third parties out there that are selling wireless head clips. Currently, I'm using the Grass Monkey. So if you choose to get a Track IR, IR5, I would highly recommend, and I, I do mean that, I highly recommend just getting the Track IR sensor. Don't bother getting the Pro Bundle. Just get the sensor, and then go to Grass Monkey and buy their wireless Track IR puck. It's awesome. Single AA, little power switch, turns on the LEDs, because that's really all it is. Three LEDs in a, in a specific array, and that's it. Stick that thing to the side of your headset. No extra cables. Works perfectly for me. And it fits a Bogey Dope sticker perfectly, which you can buy at bogeydope.net. Other than that, Track IR provides the same head tracking as any of the other solutions in this list, except for the ghost eye tracking bubble, because it doesn't track your eyes. But if you're just looking for head tracking, it's a really good option. Next is Beam Eye Tracker. Now Beam provides the same features as Toby in the sense that it provides the ghost bubble for your eye tracking and it tracks your head and face with a camera, just like Toby. The difference being Beam uses your webcam. Now I was able to meet the creator of Beam at the Flight Sim Expo in Las Vegas, Nevada last year. And according to him, it basically works with any webcam you have, albeit different webcams have different frame rates. Some are faster, some are slower, some have better quality than others. And that's the benefit of Beam. You're not buying a very expensive sensor bar. You can just use your built-in webcam, or if you have an external USB camera, you can use that. It also has the option of using your camera on your phone, but with the con of that being the latency over the network from your phone to the software on your computer. So I wouldn't really even recommend it for use in a simulator, especially if you're dogfighting. I would use a hard-lined camera. Now, because you're not buying a sensor bar and you're using your own built-in camera or your wired camera, Beam is significantly less expensive than Toby. They offer a free demo, and if you want a little bit more time, you can pay $5 for an extra month and continue doing that, or $30, and it's yours for life. Beam also provides the ghost bubble, albeit, in my opinion, doesn't seem as smooth and not as accurate as Toby, but still a really good eye tracker. Beam provides the same functionality, XYZ space, orientation of your head, leaning in, out, left and right, and rotation of your head, up, down, left and right. Just like the other head trackers, you can adjust sensitivity so that you move your head slightly to the left or right and you can look 180 degrees behind you. If you're using this just for regular flight sims like Microsoft Flight Sim or something like that, then you can bring the sensitivity way down and get almost a one-to-one -one of your head movement left and right and anywhere in between, just like any of the other head trackers in this list. Now, there are three features that Beam Eye Tracker offers that none of the head trackers in this list offer. First is presence detection. If you turn this on, it'll actually time out and lock your PC when you step away from your computer because it no longer has a face to track. So it knows you're gone and it locks your PC for you. Pretty cool. 
They also offer what's called a privacy filter, which basically blurs your entire monitor except for the spot that you're looking at. And you can increase and decrease the circle that you're looking at so that you can view more of it whilst keeping the rest of your monitor blurred. I tried this on multiple monitors. I have three monitors and it's still kept all of them blurry except for where I was looking, which is a really cool feature, again, if you're in a public setting. In addition to that, they also offer what's called mouse jumping, which basically moves your mouse to a spot that you're looking at. It doesn't do it softly, it just skips it over there. It's not really a feature that I will use personally, but some people might find really useful. Now, unfortunately, Beam does suffer from the same jitter close up in DCS that Toby does. And I personally believe this might be just pixel noise from my webcam. You can increase the tracking data filtering, which smooths it out a little bit, but it still drifts quite a bit. The other problem is the more filtering you put on, the more latency you'll have between your head movement and what you see on the screen. It's not a lot, but it does become noticeable as you increase the filtering. It's smoother, but it still doesn't stay still. Toby has the same problem, but I feel like Toby's is a little less. But again, that could just be pixel noise from my webcam. So I don't know how much I can blame Beam on this. Now this could be a combination of things. Because this is DCS, I've got the sensitivity pretty high on both Toby and Beam so that I can check my six. So because the sensitivity is so high combined with pixel noise, it's probably causing this. But but most DCS players are going to be doing the same thing because they're going to need to check their six. So I'm just reporting my findings. If you bring the sensitivity down significantly to where you're just getting a 90 degree movement left and right, it barely moves at all in either Toby or Beam. One of the downsides to Beam Eye Tracker, in my personal opinion, is that once you install Beam, you're not done. You actually also have to install OpenTrack. And Beam basically feeds OpenTrack its data. And OpenTrack acts almost like a liaison between Beam and your flight sim. So you have to have two pieces of software instead of just Beam. And lastly on my list is AI Track. AI Track provides the ability to use your webcam just like Beam, gives the same functionality as Beam and Toby in the sense that your head rotation and XYZ space are all tracked through a webcam. The biggest selling point to AI Track, it's 100% free. Now, although it still provides the same functionality as Beam and Toby, it's not nearly as solid in my personal opinion. And by that, I mean zooming in, it seems to be the least smooth and you don't have many options in AI track as far as configuration. You calibrate your face and then you turn it on. Much like Beam, it also requires OpenTrack to be installed as well. So you still have to have two pieces of software installed. But if we're comparing AI track to Beam Eye Tracker, I would take Beam over it any day. And that's my personal opinion because I feel that Beam is a little bit more polished than AI, AI track. You have more options, you have more features, and zooming in on something is more smooth. And the overall experience is just more polished and smooth than the free AI track, which is what you would expect for a free option. But I wanted to make sure you guys were aware there is a free option. Well, free if you have a webcam already. If you don't have a webcam, you're going to need one for this to work. Now me personally, on the daily, I use Track IR, and I tend to prefer it because it's more solid and more refined in its ability to track my head position in DCS. Some people cannot stand having hardware on their head. I don't mind it as long as I don't have that extra cable. So a Track IR with a Grass Monkey puck is perfect for me. And in my opinion, it gives you the most solid camera view of all of them. For example, if you set all four of these solutions to the sensitivity that is needed to check your six, this is what you get. Track IR just stands out. So of course this is entirely up to you and your preference, but I wanted to make sure that I brought at least these four. I know there are many others out there and if you have other solutions that are better, let everyone know in the comments below what you like. There's most likely head tracking out there I've never heard of. I know there's Dell and Clip and a few others, but I've never used them so I couldn't put them in the video and give an honest opinion. So if you're new and you're enjoying DCS and you want to take it to the next level, maybe start taking dogfighting a little bit more seriously, or maybe even just making DCS cinematics, you're going to need head tracking. So hopefully this was helpful, and I'll see you guys. Let's go.